Jeremy Kushner is back on the main stem starring in Cirque du Soleil's Paramore. Today we're at the Skylark to catch up with a Broadway vet. Jeremy Kushner, hey, thank hey. you for doing this. Thanks for having me. You're originating another role on Broadway. I am, yes. It's, uh, it's been almost 18 years since I originated a role on Broadway. How does it feel to be back doing that? Great. Uh, it, it's, it, it's such an exciting uh, piece to be a part of because not only is it a, a new you know, a new musical, mm -hmm. but it's also the first time that uh, Cirque has decided to, to venture into this sort of Broadway narrative musicals, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a nice banner to be able to sort of hold. And so talk to me a bit about Paramore, because as you say, it's so Cirque du Soleil's first foray on Broadway, mm -hmm. so it's got everything you'd expect from Cirque, but it also has a proper storyline, so for everyone coming, don't worry, there is stuff no, other I mean things that's going on. That's truly what makes it exciting is that, you know, Cirque, we all know that Cirque can make beautiful pictures and they, and they, and they do amazing things with acrobatics and visuals. Um, but this is really their first foray into telling a narrative story. So it, not only, you know, you, you can't just take a bunch of uh, Cirque acts and then sort of paste a story on top of it. These, because I think a, an audience nowadays is smarter than that. Mm. So you, these acts actually have to work in telling the story, that, uh, furthering the narrative in the same way that, you know, a dance or a song and a musical has to continue to further the narrative. It's these these acrobatic acts now are sort of being charged with furthering the narrative. And I think it's in so many ways super exciting um, the stuff that they've come up with and the stuff that we've th 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 that we're putting in front of an audience every day. And how has it been working with the acrobats, the Broadway actors? Are they looking and going? I mean, I, I, for both of you, I guess it, it must be an extraordinary experience I mean, to marry uh, those two. For me, art it's like the, 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 the honestly, it's the most humbled and and excited I've been doing this mm -hmm. show ever. I, if I could just work with acrobats for the rest of my life, I would. They they truly are again the most humble, the most sweet, the most gracious, the most uh, uh, hardworking people you will ever meet in your life. I mean, we're working with um, acrobats and 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 and, and uh, 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 circus performers that that have been in the Olympics that have, you know, yeah. that have competed on the world stage. It's amazing. So they come to this show with so much excitement with the with the idea that they're, you know, they're now sort of venturing sort of beyond their their comfort zone. Now, your character AJ, spoiler alert, he is involved with the love triangle. Yes. And I, I've seen it. I love the show. He's a bit mean, is that perhaps why I want that? Maybe misunderstood. There you go. <laughs> no, I think that he uh, I think that, you know, I I, I don't know. I, I tend to have um, I don't know whether it's typecasting or what it is, but uh, these are the roles that I tend to fall into, the guys that are maybe mean in quotations. Um, but but no, actually getting booed would be a good thing at the end on some levels. Yeah, so no, they're, they're loving, they're you loving definitely that enjoy, You know, you definitely enjoy, I enjoy a certain amount of, uh, of playing, you know, the, the villain that everybody loves to hate or hates to love. Um, it's fun because you also get to find the humanity in, in a character that maybe isn't the, the, a person that you would choose to be a friend with, which to me is exciting. Now, a lot of um, the shows that you've done, speaking about your characters, you've taken some incredible characters on tour, been on tour with Jersey Boys, mm -hmm. Rent very famously, mm -hmm. and so forth. Do you have a dressing room ritual that you've established to get you into the zone so wherever you are, you actually can, can get yourself out on that stage prepared at all times? I think it sort of depends on the on the piece, I think mm -hmm. that whatever, whatever character you're playing, or whatever role you're playing, or what what type of show you're doing, sort of will relate to that. I always tend to veer to music to help me get to what I need to where I need to get so to. So, what's on the playlist, Jeremy? Well, these days, it's I mean, b because it, the show that we're doing is so out there. It's you know, it's a Cirque show yeah. at its heart. But they, I'll listen. We'll listen to everything from jazz to uh, to uh, some great sort of rockabilly. Because um, it's set in the golden age of Hollywood, isn't it? Is, it? And so it doesn't do you have any throwbacks? No, I think Fred Astaire. I'll listen going. to some, some big band jazz yeah. every once in a while, or uh, that sort of that sort of will get me into the vibe. But sometimes it's just about also just waking yourself up. Sometimes it's just yeah. about like getting, you know, out of whatever the day is that you've had and getting yourself ready to perform in front of you know fifteen to eighteen hundred of your closest friends. Now a lot of kids watch these one on ones, um, and I sort of like to touch on lessons that you might have learnt. So obviously Footloose, mm -hmm. this big thing that happened um, all those years ago. What did you learn from that? And what would you like to be able to tell kids or maybe yourself back at that age well, um, I mean, I think about the, the experience? You have to remember that you want to get into this business for the right reasons. You don't want to get into it to be a celebrity or to be a star or to have accolades. Or you want to get into it because you just have to do this because you, there's something in you that needs to tell a story or there's something in you that needs to uh, 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 play these characters, whatever it is, there's something that is sort of pulling you. Um, and if you and if it's for any other reason, if it's for making money or for any of that, mm. then get a better job because there's way better ways of making money than being on Broadway. Um, but the other thing that I try to 
remind, and I, I, you know, now as I'm getting to be not the youngest member of most casts, um, not to sort of age myself, but I'm not young anymore. <laughs> um, you know, I, I try to remind the, the younger performers that I'm working with to really relish these moments mm -hmm. of, of when you are working, when you, you know, when you get a chance to be in yeah. these big shows, and because every, you know, three months into the opening of a show, you're tired and it, you're going to work. You're, yeah. It's a job now. And you sort of have to remind yourself what it was like before you did this and before you had the chance to go out and work and how, how there are thousands of people that you know, arrive on their buses and, and in airplanes and, and are going to school and, and would die for a moment yeah. like, like, you get to do, like you get to live every night eight times a week. Also, I, I do want to touch on your extraordinary understudy experience for Superstar where you understudied Jesus, Judas and Pilate mm -hmm. and went on for all three of them. Yes. You must have learned a huge amount from that experience as well. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's gone down into history, that particular Well, it's, I'm experience. happy to be part of the annals. <laughs> um, uh, no, it's, it was a great experience. It was, it was again, it was humbling um, because I got to work with uh, amazing people. You know, Paul Nolan, um, who, who was our Jesus, is still one of my closest mm -hmm. friends and, and I think one of our hugely brightly shining stars, new stars on Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, so just to get the chance to work with him was amazing and get the chance to be friends with him was amazing. But, you know, getting the chance to play these three iconic characters. Very different. Very different. Um, and I mean, and really fun. And, you know, uh, g getting to sing that music. I mean, you're quite, you're quite, you're quite know, familiar I with am, the music. But so, uh, but it's, you know, it, it, it's historic in the way that, you know, in the way that Hamilton is historic, in the way that it changed a whole generation of music theater. And so to get to live it, to get to live, and to get to live that much of it I was mean, hugely amazing huge for Huge testament to your yeah. versatility though. Huge, well, thank huge you. testament. Thanks. But you know, at the same time, it's humbling because you do, you know, you go on for Judas or you go on for Jesus and then, you know, the next day you're back blowing the shofar in the, you know, in the yeah. back row wearing your shmada. It, so it's, it's, being an understudy is really hard work and I, my hat is off to all understudies. Do you have any dream roles, anything that you would absolutely love to tackle? You know, what there's lots of things that I would love to do I w when Hedwig was rearing it's it's we were just talking about the fact that we were sitting in 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 a, in a place where they threw a party of the, the the Tony Award party for Hedwig was actually in this room um, well, I remember being a head head way back in the day when it was downtown of the Jane Street and uh, thinking how you know how amazing that mm. piece was and I always wanted to have always wanted to play that role um, much to the chagrin of most of my uh, most of the women that I dated, they were like, "That's really, really? The, the, That's the, the one, <laughs> the one musical theater, one of the only musical theater roles where you literally wear a dress." <laughs> uh, yes, I, I just think that it's. I just think that the score is amazing, and it's yeah. such a great. Again, it's one of those moments in music theater history where, where uh, 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 they took, you know, how to tell a story, mm. and they sort of turned it on its head because it's a mixture of rock and it's a mixture of cabaret and it's a mixture of, you know, uh, narrative storytelling. It's great. It's a beautiful piece. Um, so that's one of them. But really, what I love doing is creating. You know, yeah. uh, I love being on stage and performing uh, so much. But m the majority of the fun that I have happens long before the audience ever gets mm. there. I love being in the room um, with tremendous uh, 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 creative people. Yeah. Um, and that's that's really my dream is to just be able to continue to make new things and, and make new art with talented people. I you know I I really am excited to be in front of the camera and behind the camera, you know, in front of the audience, sort of in the background. It's it's I'm really lucky to get to do what I get to do. Now my final question, I always like to bring it back to the show. What do you hope audiences take away with them from Paramore? I mean, I think that the biggest thing for me is, you know, it, the story is truly about these three people discovering what love is to me. Um, uh, you know, AJ, my character, sort of discovering that love can exist, this real love does really exist. So I think really I, 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 I hope that people enjoy themselves, mm -hmm. they take, you know, they, they get to take a minute out of this crazy world that we're living in right now and, 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 and see that sort of love does exist and I think that that's maybe a really, you know, it's really an appropriate time for us to be to be telling a story about love, um, and then just having fun, you know, taking a minute, breathing, forgetting the craziness, and, and, and being in this room and enjoying yourselves and watching people, like, literally risk their lives in front of you. Jeremy Kushner, thank you so much for doing one-on-one with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Thank you.